Good afternoon, viewers, enthusiasts, fellow collectors. It's nice to have you with me again. I'm George the Antique Nomad, and I am uh, glad to see you joining us. Thanks for being with us. Uh, this afternoon, we're doing a little bit of a haul video, but it's a little different in terms of uh, we have a category and everything is something that we've listed on uh, eBay. I'm at the Antique Nomad, by the way, uh, at the Antique Mo Nomad on Periscope, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and I'm also the antique nomad on eBay and today's theme is the games people play because we got a big collection of games and some interesting ones so uh, we'll show you some stuff we're gonna put on um, first of all how many of you remember and have played the game of life this was a classic when I was a kid and they still make it but if you notice on this one take a look at the hairstyles is this something uh, hi Marjorie nice to have you with us again uh, if this is something that you remember from uh, your childhood, uh, look at the big wide lapels there. So this is 1979, and this one's never been out of the box. This is actually the one that we had when I was a kid. And so um, they go for about 25 uh, when they're the older versions like this. So uh, that was something different. We went to a great estate sale in Evansville, Indiana, and uh, found a bunch of stuff. Uh, by the way, let us know if there's any audio issues, folks, because we uh, thank you, uh, JBM Travels UK, for joining, and Nick Nikos. Um, if, you, if the audio is uh, at all an issue, please send a comment. And if you uh, recognize any of these or you uh, uh, want to mention any of the games you remember from when you were a kid, I know we have someone from the UK, so you might have some different stuff that we haven't seen here before. Um, this was in the pile of games at the estate sale and it was really cool so I got it and they are original in the box they are ice skates and you can see or roller skates I mean from uh, the late 40s early 50s and they've got uh, all sorts of stuff including skating skills the original magazine so that was kind of fun one thing I wanted to mention it's all okay but just a bit fuzzy on sound okay well that may be because I'm rustling boxes but we'll try to be real clear here um, one thing I want to point out, if you buy something at a sale and they foolishly put the price tag on the paper or on the piece of furniture where the finish is, where it would rip it, the best thing to do is take a hair dryer and heat it up as much as you can because that will soften the glue and usually you can ease them off that way without ruining the piece. And if you're having a sale, please don't put the price tags on the paper stuff. Uh, another thing I thought was cool, this is a construction game. People think about erector sets and things like that, but um, this particular one is again 1970s and this is called Nuts and Bolts. I've never heard of it before, but it was really fashionable in the 70s to do games made out of wood and things that seemed a little more hand-hewn. And like an erector set or some other things we're going to show you later made of plastic, these all screw together and you make, make all sorts of cool things out of them. So on the back they show the kids, again, very 70s looking. And the Kelly Green is like right out of 1975 when that was the big decorator color of the year. So gives us some perspective. Um, this is not something that's been on eBay or anywhere that I can find. So we're going to see how this does. I think it's an unusual and different item, kind of along the lines of Brio. Um, Again, if you folks have any, uh, were there any characters that you all liked when you were kids? Because um, we're going to look at some character games now. One of the ones we got, The Six Million Dollar Man. Anybody remember that show? I know it was a big thing when I was uh, really little. And the, um, the uh, piece here has the markdown sticker from when it was on sale way back in the 70s. Again, never been out of the box. We were really excited to find things that have never been touched because we know they have all the pieces, so that's a good thing. And thank you for the hearts, by the way, folks. Appreciate that very much. Um, on the back here, it actually shows the board game itself. And, you know, people usually want these for display, but if you want to play, at least it's got everything because it's never been opened. So um, another popular, popular show back in the day was Happy Days. And here we've got this with the graphics on the box and um, all of the uh, Cunninghams and Fonzarelli and everything. And then you've got the uh, board in here. So it's really cool to uh, have the big graphics. I think that's what a lot of people really like about this. Yes, Paula, hi there, it is game day. 
Um, and if you folks have questions about anything you see, by the way, um, shoot me a comment because I've got the computer in front of me where I should be able to keep up with your comments a little better than I do on the phone. Um, this was a Parker Brothers. They made Monopoly. They made a million things, of course. And um, uh, again, mid-70s, only made for a few years. The show was really popular for a brief flash, and that was it. Now, one that I really liked when I was a kid, because I have that sense of humor, is Mad Magazine Game. Uh, this is the What Me Worry game, and it's very silly. Everything that you do is kind of the opposite of what you would normally want to do in a board game. So this is kind of fun. And the illustration is actually uh, by Jack Davis, and he was a really famous caricature artist for Mad Magazine. Um, in fact, we have another piece here from him that I want to show you. And it is over here. Let's see. I think it's this one, yes. We just put this up. This we showed on one of my daily posts a few uh, weeks ago, but this is Sesame Street. This is from 1970, and I'll lift it up above my head. You'll be able to see the whole graphic and also Jack Davis's signature at the bottom. Now, how they got Jack Davis to do this illustration for them, I'm not really sure, because I think he was working for Matt at the time. Um, but uh, they, somebody must have known somebody, and here it is. So this is from 1970, very hard piece to find. Uh, already have a bid on that one, actually. Um, oh, people are, uh, questions above, let's see. Well, it says they're asking questions and I'm not seeing them, so I might be missing some, so I apologize. Please do uh, um, let me know, because I might be missing something and I, I want to answer your questions if I can. A um, Couple other things with the Sesame Street uh, group here is we've got from 1970, the first issues of the Sesame Street magazine. So you've got Big Bird and Oscar uh, the Grouch and uh, all that on one side. And then on the back, they would have celebrities doing little things. How much for original Monopoly? Well, there's a good question. Uh, original Monopoly came out in 1935. It's all based, all the street names are names of streets in Atlantic City. Uh, so they were all done on that. And part of the reason Monopoly was so popular is it takes a few hours to play. And back in the Depression, people had time to kill. And that was part of why it took off. Original from 1935, if you could find one in mint condition with all the pieces, I, I believe they go well over $100 now, uh, potentially even a couple of hundred. And that's despite the fact that they made a bunch of them back then. Um, but there's not very many of the original 1935 ones around. Um, anyway, on the back here, we've got Bill Cosby and we've got Flip Wilson on the back of Sesame Street. And also part of that lot is this um, Big Bird um, piece. This is when Big Bird just came out. Hi, Town Traveler. Nice to have you with us. Oh, thank you for the super hearts. Uh, uh, it's nice to have the smileys with us again. And uh, here is uh, Big Bird again. And that was the parent's guide. And then I've got one more piece that's Sesame Street that uh, came out of that batch. And that was this for the Sesame Street Film Festival. Also 1970, also the children's television workshop information on there. I don't really know exactly what the Sesame Street Film Festival was. Do any of you? I don't know if any of you were little kids then or lived near um, New York or DC or wherever this happened, but maybe someone out there can tell us a little more about it because I don't really know. Um, and then as far as my personal favorite from this haul as character wise, we've got this great little beanie. If you remember Beanie and Cecil who were a little before my time, but I've looked into them since and they're super cute. The graphics are great. And they were uh, very fun characters. And Beanie, of course, had to have a beanie. Beanie was, uh, uh, you know, they had the uh, uh, beanie on him. And the best part is it's a beanie copter. So when you pull this, if you get it right, there we go. <laughs> it takes off somewhere across the room. It's that kind of thing your mom said, you could put an eye out with this. And she was right. <laughs> Show the front by camera. Oh, okay, yes, I should do that actually now that I shot it across the room. And here you go. I hope that you can see this a little bit better, but there's Beanie and Cecil on there. Um, oh, how much for original Scrabble? Well, to tell you the truth, um, Scrabble doesn't sell for a whole ton, 
uh, because they came out in 47 and Sle Seshlo and Ry uh, Richter who uh, made the Scrabble boards, it was kind of an off thing for them and it became such a huge deal that they just cranked them out and they didn't change them for years. So the original kind of stayed the same for a really long time. Um, people do like the Scrabble tiles made out of wood and the wooden holders, so if you can find them with that, that is what they did originally, but they did it for years, so they're not super valuable, but I know people now are buying the tiles, yes, Paul is right, they're buying the tiles and the boards for crafts, and actually a lot of incomplete game boards and game sets are being used for crafting purposes or for other repurposing, so if you have an old game and it's lost some of the pieces but they're cool, it still might have somebody who uh, would be interested in it. Um, now this got a bid right away and I'm going to hold it up front because it's a little small so you can see. This is a Novus uh, by National Semiconductor. You wouldn't think of them as a toy maker but they made calculators and if you remember, if you're old enough to remember back in the 70s when calculators first came out they were super expensive. You could pay hundreds of dollars for a calculator that does about the same thing that the free ones they give you in a uh, store or an office supply place now do. Um, but calculators were a big deal, so they decided to make some for kids. Owls are a popular motif, late 70s, early 80s. And here you've got some definitely 80s looking kids, a little different from that Life magazine. Um, and then a big, long, boring letter on the back from National Semiconductor telling you how this can be a teaching tool for your child, which to me is the first thing that would make a kid not be interested in it. But the good thing is is that some modern grown-up kid today is, and it got a bid right away, and I'm sure that uh, other people are gonna like it too. Um, are there any favorite games out there that people remember or haven't seen in years that you're looking for? Let me know, because I'm out there. I, I might see them. I was surprised this estate sale in uh, Evansville had Dr. Kill there and a bunch of other uh, old TV shows I hadn't thought of or didn't know about because they were not my era, um, but they were really fun to look at. Uh, another thing we've got, Simon. Now this is another one we were really fortunate to find in the original cell, uh, cellophane shrink wrap. This is from 1978 when it came out. Um, it's probably a game that doesn't need a lot of explanation. Oh, you have Risk. Is it popular? Well, it is actually. Risk is so popular that it's another example of a game where they made so many that they're not worth a whole ton because it actually is a really popular game. But again, if you have the older piece uh, sets made in the 70s and earlier, the little pieces are made out of wood rather than plastic, and people do look for that. And I think Risk came out in the 60s and was originally a different graphic that's more 60s looking, and those are definitely a little more valuable. How much is Catan? I wish I knew. I will have to look that one up and uh, do a little study on that because I haven't had that one and I haven't seen it. So I don't actually, uh, I mean, I haven't seen it come across, you know, where I've been shopping or online. So um, I'll try to figure that out. And if I, uh, if I get an answer, if you want to uh, message me, I'll uh, definitely uh, send back an answer. Um, as far as Simon goes, the thing that's so unusual about this isn't that it exists, because they made a lot of them, it's that this one was never opened, and this is an original from 78. Catan is, uh, Simon, yeah, Simon is a newer game, 1978 is when this came out, and uh, so this is one of the first ones, and it's My Name is Simon, and they're talking all about what it does, and of course you, uh, have to do the buttons in the sequence that the lights flash and it gets harder and harder and faster and faster until nobody can possibly remember it all, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, some, uh, someone asked me about this when I first had it in a haul video a few months ago and I didn't have a chance to get in there and uh, find out, so it's online now. Um, how much for Clue, Cludio? Um, oh, you were talking to JVM, okay. Um, Clue is, a, Clue is a game that is, again, pretty collectible. There are different versions of it. I think the earliest are the late 60s, if I'm not mistaken, and they're the most valuable. You're probably looking at 30 to 35 would be my estimate, but I'd have to look to make sure. Um, it's also possible that uh, if it was sealed that it might be worth more. The nice thing about Clue is it has lots of interesting little parts. That means finding it with all the interesting little parts is not necessarily so easy. And that was another game I really loved too. Uh, 
I always uh, assumed it was Mr. Mustard who did it, but I usually was wrong. Um, anyway, you see I'm holding here a speak and spell. We're kind of into the electronic games now, and I have several, but these are the ones that I could uh, get to easily. Um, this particular one, believe it or not, I didn't think much of speak and spell because I just, have I seen the Clue movie? Yes, I have. Have you, and which version did you see? Because I think there's three endings? or more. That was the thing that was so cool about them doing it as a movie is they knew the game could turn out anyway so they did different endings for the movie. Is Trivial Pursuit any good? Actually I didn't think so but then a friend of mine who um, looks for this sort of thing got one recently that was uh, an original Genus edition from 1984 I think that's when that came out and he found it, uh, I believe he found one that was unopened and it turned out to be worth quite a bit. So um, I was surprised by that. Um, that uh, Trivial Pursuit is a game I love because you can imagine being an antique nerd that we know a little bit about a lot of stuff, so it's perfect. Um, they're not worth any money, I sell them. Yeah, I don't think they're worth a ton usually, but I still think they're really cool. And there's so many different cards you can add onto them, so it keeps it interesting. Anyway, as far as Speak and Spell goes here, this was Texas Instruments, again, another company that mainly makes calculators and office machines making a toy, but, hey, why not? Um, it's a Speak and Spell. A lot of people learned on these when they were kids, and they actually are surprising about uh, how expensive they can be. I mean, this can sell for between $50 and $100 in working order, which this one is. And you said Trivial Pursuit about eight to nine. Yes, that seems about right to me. I, I'd say that's where a lot of a lot of the most popular board games that they made a lot of that is kind of the range they sell in. A lot sell in like the fifteen dollar range if they're in good shape and have all the pieces. I just think it's cool that people are interested in them because five or ten years ago people were just saying, "Oh, throw that away, throw that away." Nobody does that anymore. Nobody wants that anymore. And of course, that's what makes collecting happen is. Get rid of the toys from a certain generation, and then that generation grows up, and then they want their toys back. And here we are. <laughs> um, this one's kind of cool because it's ice hockey, and it is actually its own little rink. This is a Radio Shack product, and now that Radio Shack is out of business, some Radio Shack things are actually starting to really sell. Uh, because um, a lot of us who grew up in that era, that was the electronics store. Before there was, you know... Best Buy and all these, you know, big huge box stores, that's where you went for stuff. And so uh, a lot of us are familiar with these games because that's what was available. Um, this one's electronic again and it uh, has hardly been used. It's battery operated and it does work. So um, now one thing I wanted to show you also uh, because we're talking about eBay is yes, I will indeed sell the shirt off my back. Um, this is not a game or a toy, but it is a really cool shirt. Uh, it's got one little piece that needs to be mended there, but I don't like to s pretend that things are in better shape than they are, so uh, I'm just leaving it the way it is. But this is a Kentucky Fried Chicken shirt. This is a tiki design when they were doing, I think they had some Polynesian chicken in the early 70s or something as a promotion, and this would have been the shirt that they had the people wear for a brief period of time during that. You can see the colonel in here, if you look closely, he repeats in various places. KFC is upside down here, but then it's got all this tapa print, like a tapa cloth from um, Hawaii. This was made in America um, by a company called His that was a big early 70s maker of uh, this sort of stuff. And the great thing is, is that it's, in other than this one little mend here, it's actually in pretty good condition. And uh, this actually has a bit already too, so I will sell the shirt off of my back in the next few days. Um, one more thing I wanted to show you if I can find it. We were taking some pictures and I think that uh, it went in the other room. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, in the meantime, let me look at a couple of other things here. These are not games, but I'll show you a few things. Twister, uh, and actually I'm gonna look at this too. Twister is selling on eBay in the UK for around 3.30 if you find the first ones ever made. Wow, that's pretty impressive actually. Twister was a um, really popular game in its time and the first edition sells well in the States too. I think they are going for a few hundred dollars. Oh, thank you, and, and here has appeared, thank you very much, um, Mr. Hands came in off the uh, side of the uh, screen there and now we have the other game I wanted to show you. This one is robotics. 
Uh, we got a couple of robot games. Anything robot is really popular right now. Uh, this particular one is Milton Bradley. There were four different ones that they came out with about 1985. This one's called Argus. You could build about nine different things with these. Uh, the great thing about this is we open it up and because we have to represent this properly, we went through and discovered that yes indeed, every piece is still there. In fact, we doubt it was played with because there's still the plastic wrap on the uh, uh, motors and on the uh, spaceman here. I know that might be hard to see, but this is the spaceman. People are selling pieces out of these for $10 and $15 a piece, some of the harder to find uh, bits that are missing from other sets. So to find the whole thing intact, it's got all the manuals. It's also got the um, sticker labels here. So it's never been used and it is something that I suspect is probably gonna price out somewhere between 50 and $75. And there's also, um, oh, Robotics is now on PS4. Yeah, see, this is an interesting thing. So much of this stuff is coming back in some new form. And that is actually really cool for toy collectors. And also, I, I will be honest with you, I've been around antiques long enough to know that saying that they're an investment is a dicey thing. Things go up, things go down, generations change. Buy things because you like them, but if you're into this kind of stuff, the good thing with this is that if they're starting it on PlayStation, that means that it's a throwback for people who remember this version growing up, but it also means a whole new generation of young people are being exposed to it, and so the brand will carry on, and so there'll be interest in the future. So to me, that makes it also a potential future collectible, which is good. A couple little things just to wrap up because they're fun and you're going to see them on there. These are not games and toys, but they came as part of the haul, so I'm going to mention them briefly. Um, this is Mr. P.W. Baston. He was the founder of Sebastian's Miniatures and this actually is a bust of him for the 70th or 75th anniversary of his birth and also the 50th anniversary of them making Sebastian Miniatures and he signed it on the bottom. So someone who collects that I think will find that interesting. Hopefully you can see that. Um, Another thing we got, just for fun, because I hadn't had one before and it was inexpensive, we got a tuner. A little hard to hear from, uh, let me do it by the mic. You can probably hear that. That is the key of C. And it's an older one, and I figured that somebody uh, who's a musician would probably get some use out of that. I also picked up this. This is Goldwater. If you were attending the 1964 campaign rallies for Barry Goldwater, a lot of them were held in the summer, it was hot, and so this company in Illinois, Goldwater Distributing Company from Granite City outside of St. Louis, made cans of water and then put Goldwater for Barry Goldwater on them. He lost the election by a landslide, but he did leave us some really cool collectibles, and Barry Goldwater is one of the most collectible of the recent uh, presidential candidates, actually. Um, this piece will probably sell for about $15, which is pretty good for an empty can. Um, we'll goodbye for now, and we'll see you again soon.